In this video, we're gonna talk about XFOIL and the primary method it uses in analyzing the performance of an airfoil, namely the panel method. This is the second video in a series dedicated to the airfoil software, where we're going to look at lecture material, tutorials, and deep dive into software, all with the goal of bringing you from absolute beginner to a subject matter expert on this software. The series, of course, is brought to you by The Science of Flight, a new brand here on YouTube dedicated to aerospace engineering education and software. Well, let's get to it. In this video will briefly introduce two-dimensional panel methods. This is due to the fact that XFOIL is built primarily on a 2D panel method for calculating the inviscid uh, analysis values that it uses. Uh, so because it's built on that, uh, I figured it'd be good to go ahead and kind of cover um, what a 2D panel method is, kind of how it works, what's the idea behind it, so that you can understand what XFOIL is doing when it's trying to solve uh, for a particular solution, for a particular inviscid analysis solution. So the two-dimensional panel method is built on potential flow analysis. This is actually a, uh, comes from theoretical aerodynamics. So a lot of the assumptions and uh, limitations of XFOIL actually is inherited um, from this potential flow analysis. Now, what is this 2D panel method? What does it do? Um, it starts with an airfoil shape. As you can see here on the right, I've got an airfoil there. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's actually going to, going to take that airfoil shape and it's going to break it up into different flat panels. And I will go ahead and make sure they're colored red. There we go. So as you can see, the edges of the flat panel are actually along the airfoil shape. And what we're doing is we're actually breaking up the shape into multiple panels. Um, oftentimes it's called a panel because it's made up of a panel sheet, um, which just means instead of these flat lines, um, they're actually planes or actually panels um, that extend infinitely into the screen and infinitely out of the screen. But that's kind of getting a little too much into it. Um, since we're staying with the two-dimensional panel method, uh, we can just assume that these flat pa flat panels are just kind of lines right there um, that are made to approximate the shape of the airfoil. <clears throat> so that's the first step of a panel method is that it takes the airfoil shape and it breaks it up into panels. Now what's nice about XFOIL is that it gives you the option of adjusting the number of panels that you use for your airfoil shape. So um, obviously if you use more panels, you're gonna get a better approximation of the airfoil shape and you're gonna get better results. <clears throat> However, there is a point though that um, once you start getting more panels, you're, it's not really worth it. Um, be, because as you increase uh, the number of panels, you're also going to be inc increasing the computational time it takes to solve uh, for the solution. So there is a, a, a point where you, kind of like the law of diminishing returns, where um, just that little bit better quality result is usually not worth the computational time it takes to get it. Um, so that's kind of one of the balancing things uh, that you're going to have to learn to do is balancing the number of panels you want versus the computational time it might take to solve. <clears throat> now one way um, that you can get around that and XFOIL has this functionality is that you can actually change the density of the panels near the leading edge and the trailing edge. Um, so it almost acts like it's got more panels, but at the same time, since it's 
more dense towards the leading edge and the trailing edge um, and less dense in the middle area of the airfoil, um, you're actually able to get better results with not as much uh, computational time. And we'll actually cover how to change the number of panels and the panel density in, in a future video. <clears throat> All right, so the first step is that you have your airfoil shape and you approximate it with flat panels, as you see there on the red. Now what happens with these flat panels is that the midpoint of the panel, the midpoint of the line, is what's called a control point. I've also heard it called a collocation point. Um, and this has some specific attributes. One of the attributes is that at that point, the flow uh, has a normal velocity of zero. So it's completely tangential to the uh, to the midpoint there. Now, there are different panel methods. There's a source panel method and a vortex panel method. The difference being that at that midpoint, a source panel method will put a source. This is like a source, um, for instance, source versus sink. So this will just be a source at the midpoint. Whereas a vortex panel method will place a vortex at the midpoint. Now there is a difference between source panel method and vortex panel method in terms of the type of flow analysis they can do. A source panel method is only good for a non-lifting body. This is of course because a source is not able to uh, simulate circulation and it also it does not enforce the cut a condition. The cut a condition being um, the cutting condition uh, kind of basically or briefly is um, ensuring that the flow around the trailing edge um, is going to match the actual physical um, what's physically going to happen at the trailing edge uh, so making sure that it leaves in the correct direction correct velocity correct pressure so um, just put simply, the cutting condition is making sure that the flow behaves correctly around the trailing edge. So since the source panel method is not able to account for circulation or enforce the cutting condition, it is only used for non-lifting bodies. The vortex panel method, on the other hand, is used for lifting bodies because the vortexes are able to uh, kind of simulate circulation. Let me add the vortexes on. There you go. Uh, so the vortexes are able to simulate circulation um, and on a vor vortex panel method, it actually enforces the cutting condition. And because of this, it is actually able to be used for lifting bodies. So x foil is actually based on a vortex panel method. So it's able to be used on airfoils for lifting bodies. Now, sometimes also used as a what's called a higher order panel method um, which sometimes means it might mix source and, panel, and vortex uh, panel methods where it's primarily a vortex method but it might use some source uh, panel method like some sources on panels near the trailing edge to kind of help with the, the flow around the trailing edge um, but uh, let's not get into it too deeply I guess and in this video, just kind of briefly covering what, what this vortex panel method is. So X-Foil is based on a vortex panel method. So it is able to handle lifting bodies. And since it's used primarily for airfoil design, which airfoils are lifting bodies, um, it's actually able to account for that. Alright, so this is kind of how the airfoil is broken up. It's broken up into panels and in the middle of the panel it's going to have this vortex. Now the strength of the vortex is actually not known. We don't know how strong that vortex is. And so what's happening is that um, the vortex panel method is actually trying to iterate and solve 
for the strength of each of these vortex um, on each of the panels. Now, just so we're aware, the, the vortex, the strength of a vortex on one panel does not have to be the same strength as the panel next to it or any other panel on the airfoil. So what it's doing is actually it's trying to solve for the strength of the vortex so that that airfoil shape is actually a streamline, <clears throat> specifically this stagnation streamline. So <clears throat> so in a vortex panel method, you're solving for the strengths of the vortex on each panel so that the airfoil shape is a streamline. <clears throat> so why do we care about the strength of the vortex? Well, the strength of the vortex from each panel can be um, added together, summed up uh, to determine the total circulation of the flow around the airfoil. Now when you're able to find, figure out this total circulation around the airfoil using the Kutta-Joukowsky theorem, you're also able to turn that total circulation into the lift that's created from the airfoil. And so this is kind of the basic method of what's going on in X-Foil. It's taking the airfoil shape, it's breaking it up into panels. At the midpoint of the panels, it's adding a vortex, and it's kind of iterating through each panel to, to figure out the strength of the vortex needed to make sure that the airfoil shape is the stagnation streamline. And once it determines those strengths of the vortexes, then it can, it can solve for the lift characteristics of the airfoil. So that's the basic method behind the two-dimensional vortex panel method that is being used by X-Foil. Now, um, as I said before, it, this vortex panel method is used for inviscid analysis of an airfoil. However, depending on what kind of analysis you're doing in X-Foil, uh, for instance, if you add uh, a viscosity term, or if you add viscosity properties to the analysis, then the X-Foil might actually take the results of this inviscid analysis and adjust it or tweak it so that it can determine what the viscous um, a result of analysis will most likely be. For instance, it might have some sort of boundary layer method where um, it kind of determines what kind of boundary layer it's going to have um, and looks at the wake um, to determine some of the losses due to viscosity and so it'll kind of um, tweak the, not tweak, it'll, it'll take the inviscid results and kind of convert it into viscous results. Um, X-Foil also has some other functionality in terms of compressibility, um, where it has some compressibility corrections depending on um, the compressibility uh, in the analysis, how fast the flow is going. So it has some other methods that it might use in, con in, in conjunction with this two-dimensional panel method. Um, but this kind of panel method is the heart of x -Fall. And because of that, I figured I'd, I'd have a quick video discussing um, kind of how it works so you understand what's going on in x -Fall. Um And I'm probably gonna go ahead and add a couple future videos um, for some of these other, uh, I guess, tweaks or um, other models that's used in conjunction with x -Fall. so we can chat about how those work and what it's doing to the results or how it's determining you know the viscous result or um, doing some of the compressibility corrections so we'll go ahead and we'll cover that uh, in a future video 
Um, but in the meantime, I, I think this is a good place um, to end this video um, covering two-dimensional panel methods. Now, in the next video, we're going to have a brief review of airfoil uh, geometry since some of the modification of the, and tutorials we're going to do is going to modify some of the airfoil geometry. We'll have a quick uh, review of airfoil geometry in the next video. And for those of you wanting maybe a more in-depth coverage of two-dimensional panel methods, um, I would refer you over to the other series that I'm creating in, um, along with this, uh, this X-Foil series. Um, on my channel it's all about aerodynamics and over the next several weeks um, there's going to be uh, plenty of videos uploaded to kind of help you dis um, help you gain mastery and profici proficiency over panel methods as well as some of the other methods that might be used in other software uh, so go ahead and check out that series as well um, to help you learn and become um, proficient with aerodynamics. Uh, this series of course is dedicated to X-Foil so we're going to try and stay on topic with X-Foil. Alright so um, that's the end of this video. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe and of course leave a comment below um, with regard to the question of the video and I will see you in the next video.